good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cairo. It's really my pleasure and my honor to participate to today in this very important but actually a critical event, uh, talking about the water issues in a very critical timing of our global arena. Uh, let me first start before getting into the business of uh, talking about climate change and water resources to re-emphasize one important fact that I think is very important uh, that we all to be on the same page. The climate change and its impact on the daily life has been discussions in different rooms, different parts of the world since 1992. And let us go back in time before discussing those issues of climate change, environmental resources, and our natural resources. And why the convention in the first place came to life. Because this has been forgotten throughout all our work as practitioners in different venues. In 1992, the world decided on a very bold action of bringing to life the UNFCCC, the UNCBD, and the UNCCD. And we need to, ha to have a stop here, because at that point of time, they were the Rio Conventions, as they were called at that time, because they were born at Rio de Janeiro, uh, uh, were meant to be created and born together to give a boost to the sustainable development processes at the national level. And what does this mean? This simply means that with the very basic uh, definition of the sustainable development is to conserve the management, the sustainable management of our natural resources for the current and the future generation, which we all know. By the time the implementation started into place, and those who has been witnessing all the changes that has been taking place with the conventions, they were separated. The climate change took its track, the biodiversity took its track, and the land degradation started in a way, although its importance to the developing country, especially to Africa where we belong, is almost dying in a way. And then we came in 2010, 2011, and we started talking again that our planetary boundaries are not able to sustain our actions, our human interaction, our daily uh, interventions. And we started talking about the 1.5, the 2 percent, the climate change impact, the extreme weather events, and we started moving around with all those issues until we came into the Paris Agreement. With the Paris Agreement in 2015, yes, the world, the developed and the developing country came into a very strong position, into a bold action, and Paris Agreement came to birth. But at the same time, within the same year of 2015, we find also the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. And then we kept starting discussing how are we going to implement that. And we went from Paris to Morocco to Germany, and then we're going to Poland in, in a few months, in a couple of months, in fact. And we forgot, again, that the reason why climate change was born as a convention, and the whole idea of bringing that to birth is that it should be linked to the biodiversity and to the desertification convention, the three of them together would exemplify the sustainable development processes and advancement at the national level. This is not what we are here today. We are now um, hosting, Egypt is hosting, and we are convening with those 
all those distinguished experts from around the world, the Cairo Water Week, and the topic of it is the water resources management or water conservation for the sake of the sustainable department. Why I'm giving this very uh, uh, small introduction? Because that's the essence of the presentation that I am going to, to, to present today. The idea of the climate change, adding to what has been presented by the moderator in the beginning of the session, is by all means not an environmental challenge. It is a developmental challenge. It hits hard all the development processes of our communities, of our daily life, without differentiation between developed or developing countries. And for that reason, we need to think again and to reshift our mindset into the way why the climate change was born, when it was born, how it was born, and the conventions that are related to it, instead of reinventing the wheel and keep discussing the same thing over the period of five to ten years from now, and we're still talking about the same thing. We're still talking about the impact of climate change on water resources, on agriculture, how there are vulnerable communities, how are we adapting, how are we mitigating the 1.5 report, the policy communication. It is 2, percent, uh, two, two degrees or 1.5. But we actually forgot the very essential reason that it was born in order to support the sustainable development processes together with two other conventions. So we cannot separate them and keep them away from each other and keep getting into the same room every year asking ourselves why there is not an impact and actual progress on the ground. Because we have actually, by our own deeds, decided to separate them. We've decided to tackle the sustainable development goals with the national sustainable development strategies as a one track at the national level, the climate change adds its all its effort within the ministries of environment and the financial resources, regardless of the negotiation process, which I know very well because my team of the negotiators are here, which is a completely different separate track within the climate change projects and effort, and biodiversity within the another third track and then the land degradation within a fourth track while the four of them should be the one track where all the efforts and the intervention would go through that sorry to make it that long but if 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 we are looking at the presentation i would like to start by one important fact from the ipcc and then getting into our national framework, where does climate change stand within the sustainable development strategy of Egypt Vision 2030? What is the, the Egypt strategy on the national adaptation and risk reduction says on issues related to water resources? Our proposed climate change adaptation strategy for the Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation uh, in Egypt what are the measures that we think are most important and then the way forward? Okay, there is indeed an interaction and this is what I have been discussing uh, a while ago between the hydrology and the water resources and the impact of climate change uh, on each of the daily activity and the development challenges that our world is facing. For sure, the water is a resource a natural resource that we need to start thinking, or we've started thinking a long time ago with the integrated water resources management concept on how best to utilize that resource and how sustainably to manage that resource. But with the climate change impact, there is different scenarios into that. There is an actual, for the drought and the flood, increased frequency that is happening in different parts of the world without differentiating between developed or developing country, rich or poor communities, and the magnitude of the draft. But for the rainfall, there is still some discussions and arguments about the, definition, the definite um, increase of the rainfall, its shortage, and its impact on our daily work in that part. For the IPCC, 
This is a very interesting part that the more frequent drought is happening, definitely due to the climate change. And this will challenge the existing water management system, which definitely would risk the domestic supply in most parts of Africa. This comes from the AR5 of the IPCC report. The spatial distribution of the impacts of climate change on the resource availability still varies between climate models. And strongly with the pattern of the projected rainfall change, there is a strong consistency of the projection of reduced availability around the Mediterranean and some parts of the southern Africa. With that in place, what did Egypt start doing and when looking at the climate change portfolio at large and then going down to the climate change impact on the water resources? This sustainable development strategy, Egypt Vision 2030, with its three pillars, economic, social, and environment, has emphasized the importance of climate change. So the environment pillar in the SDS 2030 has specific programs and targets related to climate change. One is developing the policies to reduce the air pollution and compact the climate change. The other is the infrastructure to support efforts in order to compact climate change and following the implementation of all the international agreements. And in that part, I would like to stop uh, one minute because what was happening in, in, in Egypt is that most of our international commitments, environmental international commitments, was actually working in one track. So we're working on the climate change, the Barcelona Convention, the various MEAs convention, and we're tackling our national and local environmental challenges alone. Well, it should not be. So one target that we've put in a very bold and ambitious way is that we wanted to ensure that over the next 10 years, there is a consistency and alignment between our international commitments under the multilateral environmental agreements and our national policies and plans. And by the way, that's not easy. That's not easy to unify two different tracks and try to align between your national policies and programs and your international commitments. By nature, it should happen. But in practice, it's not easy to do that. Because if it was easy, then all our international commitments would have been translated into actual actions on the ground, and those actual actions would be reported each year or twice or, or each biannual, and then nothing is going wrong, and we are all happy when we meet at the conference of parties of the convention, but that's not the case, unfortunately. So another important fact is the infrastructure to face the adverse impact of climate change. Egypt is very much realizing the impact of climate change on the water resources, and especially on the coastal zone. And for that part, there were so much of intervention and efforts and investment conducted by the Ministry of Water Resources at the coastal line, especially on the Nile Delta. The recent effort that was conducted jointly between the Ministry of Water Resources, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is the submission of the Nile Delta Adaptation Project to the Green Climate Fund, which was approved a year ago. And this project is specifically is talking about the infrastructure and the dams that should be conducted at the line shore of the Nile Delta for the protection and better adaptation into that part. The climate change processes in Egypt, as any other country, started with the uh, ratification of the UNFCCC in 1992, went through the whole process of signing the agreement of submitting our initial national communication, second national communication, third national communication. We went into Paris like all other countries. We were negotiating on behalf of Africa because Egypt at that time was the president of the African Ministerial Conference on environment. We went out from Paris, we signed the agreement in 2016, in April 2020, to April 2016. That was the 
the quickest agreement that was signed by many of the countries, a historic moment that took place at the premises of the headquarters in New York. And then after that, we came into submission of our third national communication. Egypt ratified the Paris Agreement, which was also the very quickest ratification that took place in the history of the country for environmental conventions. And then we embarked into the preparation and submission of our proposal for the development of our national adaptation plan to be funded by the Green Climate Fund. In fact, that's the regular uh, business as usual scenario for the climate change processes in Egypt. Egypt also has developed its own national strategy for adaptation to climate change and disaster risk reduction. It has been very difficult throughout this study that Egypt embarked on is to be certain of the change in the river flow. However, what the study came up with is that any slight shift will have a significant effect due to the country uh, reliability on the flow. The temperature will rise and there will be an increase in the water demand for the agriculture purposes. The strategy itself had four goals. One is to build a culture of safety first while raising the community awareness, considering adaptation to climate change and disaster risk reduction as a national priority, scientific handling of the issue because we need science for the parts related to the uncertainty, researches and study. However, with this strategy that is in place, which we are trying to update that right now through our preparation of our national adaptation plan, we will find that one important part related to the climate change adaptation at large and the disaster risk reduction is related to the governance and the creation of the enabling environment. I would simply say if we have built the most high-tech infrastructure for adapting to climate change, if we are able to get all the low-cost innovative technologies in order to change the way we are using the crop, if we are adapting to the crop pattern, if we are working on the science that relates very much to the uncertainty without the appropriate efficient governance of the stakeholder engagement, all the stakeholders and creating the enabling environment. And by the enabling environment here, I'm discussing about three important facts. The policies and the regulation that governs the, the dealing with the climate change as a development challenge, not as an environmental challenge. Secondly, the response from the citizen and their awareness on the impact of the climate change on their daily life. And thirdly, having the right capacities in the right places in order to better adapt to the impact of climate change. Without those three, in order to create the appropriate enabling environment, it will be impossible to sustain any intervention that the country is taking in order to face the adverse impact of climate change. We can build the best infrastructure, but without the citizen awareness, without having the laws and the regulation, without having the national capacities in order to maintain that infrastructure and see what's its added value, it will be available for three years, for 10 years, for 15 years, but it will not be sustained. So the key to the intervention to adapt to climate change is to have the efficient, appropriate governance in place. The proposed climate change adaptation strategy for the Ministry of Water Resources discussed three key climate-induced risks. The first one is the droughts and the water scarcity, looking at the reduced water supply, the conflict among competing user and sector on the scarce resources, the increased pollution in the streams, because still the water quality counts in order to better to adapt to the impact of climate change, and the cross-cutting issues, the interlinkages of the other sectors, like the, the, the moderator has mentioned in the beginning of the session, the, the agriculture, the energy, and the transport, they are all 
interrelated to the issue of the water resources. Secondly, the higher water consumption, and we are embarking on a very ambitious and bold plan and strategy to conserve the use of our uh, water in different sectors and by the citizen. And this will include decreased water availability for agriculture, decreased water availability for the municipal sector and the industrial sector. And the third is the increased risk of flood with the following consequences of the submergence of low-lying lands, the erosion in the main Nile and the canal, and the more frequent and higher intensity of the flash floods, which is happening in Egypt every year much more harder than the other years. The way forward, Egypt has submitted its national, <coughs> intended national determined contribution, and according to the first NDC that Egypt has submitted, there were some priorities that were included, which would focus on increase investment in modern irrigation system, cooperate with the Nile Basin countries to reduce the water evaporation and increase the river capacity, develop the national policies to encourage the citizen on the water use rationale, and the integrated coastal zone management. According to Egypt and DC, we had focused on the water resources in some specific areas, this would include maintaining the water level in Lake Nasser, increasing water storage capacity, improving irrigation and draining system, changing the cropping pattern and farm irrigation system, reducing the surface water evaporation, developing the new water resources through Upper Nile projects, rainwater harvesting, desalination, treated wastewater, and increased use of the deep ground water reservoir. From that perspective, uh, I would go back to tackling the environment and the climate change and the water resources would need us to think again outside the box in a way of linking the Rio conventions again together for the sake of using the best financial resources. We will not be able to overcome all the challenges without the capacities, without the financial resources needed. And it's a true fact that there is a very minimal financial resources that is available in the world to face all the, the, the challenges of the climate change that is happening right now. So from that perspective, Egypt has uh, initiated within the framework of its presidency, its upcoming presidency, to the Convention on the Biological Diversity the CBD COP14 that Egypt is hosting next month in Sharm el-Sheikh, an Egyptian initiative for the ecosystem restoration. And the ecosystem restoration is bringing back the climate change, the land degradation, and the biodiversity together for uh, efficiently using the resources, for getting more win-win approaches, for really supporting the countries to work more on the sustainable development processes, and much more important is linking them so that we would all walk in one track, not four tracks. I thank you very much, and I'm ready for any questions.